Welcome back. So today uh, I have a Thrustmaster T16000M uh, flight stick. This is uh, one of, I'm, I'm assuming honestly, multiple um, models that I have. Um, I recently picked this up in a kit of this, the um, throttle and the pedal rudders uh, from eBay for about 50 bucks um, with pretty much everything broken other than the um, than the, the throttle. Um, the foot pedals had a broken um, rudder, basically the thing that has the foot pedal attached to the rail that does the actual bending and, and flexing. Um, those were broken, so I had to fix that. Uh, then as I was putting everything back together, I discovered that the flight stick is also broken uh, due to a really common problem with a the, um, the yaw axis potentiometer inside of it. Uh, let me show you what I mean, and then we will take it apart, replace it, upgrade it, and get it all back together. If you saw previously, uh, there's this bracket on the bottom. This is a 3D printed uh, adapter that somebody on Thingiverse modeled that I can link below, followed by a um, VESA universal pole mount so that I can slide them onto arms that are attached to my chair. And then they screw in and they latch in and that way my whole chair becomes a, uh, a flight seat. So that's why that's on the bottom. Anyhow, uh, so I have the, the stick plugged in. We will open it up on a computer and pull up the um, test system for it. So right now it's set to zero or sorry, it's, it's all uh, average out at zero, but if I touch the stick at all, uh, what a time to have um, not a technical difficulty. It actually seems to be working great. Uh, if I rotate, if I rotate, if I rotate left, it goes to zero. If I rotate right, it goes all the way forward. What was happening before is the moment I touched it, it would jitter all over the place. It would zero out, 100% out, in between, it would never be straight. So the moment I tried playing anything, I would always be drifting that way. Uh, it seems to be better today, uh, but we are going to replace it and fix it because it's a known problem and I don't want it happening again, I want to play a game. So let's get this back, get my phone remounted and uh, do all this again. We're back in place. I have a new camera rig, uh, which is super useful, but it's a little awkward to get tall things in frame. So let's take this apart. The potentiometer is located right about here. Uh, so we have to take the whole handle apart and we can get to it. So let's do that real quick. I've been waiting all week to get to making around this video because I have been dying to play Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen with this new gear. And I haven't because it's been broken <laughs> and I needed to make a video. So we pull the grip off. Take out this one screw. And the whole thing there comes out. So all that's off now is the throttle guard or the uh, trigger guard. That is, I believe a Phillips zero and then it's held in by a pin. So we're gonna take that out real quick as well. So on through this side. So this side, you can see it here, All right? And then flips in on that side. We're gonna go from this side because it's deeper. Um, I will use, I have a two, T2 bit. We're gonna try that real quick. I'm just gonna push. Yep, nicked my finger on it. Um, but that is out. Now it's out. Uh, and that should just come apart. I got everything out, right? Nope, there's one more screw. I missed it. Anyways, yes, so I've been dying to get this video made because I want to play my games. And I haven't had the time to fix it. So. Pull this apart, making sure not everything goes flying out, because I know some of this is going to go like that. And these little rubber stops come with them, so let's not lose those. There we go. So that comes out. 
this button over here we will leave in because I don't think it's going to easily come out, which is perfectly fine. I'm going to unlatch this side. And then we have the um, top, the hat. I forget what this is called. The uh, I can only call it top hat. The um, hat button, these three buttons on the circuit board, and then right here we have the potentiometer. So I'll zoom in slightly. So this is our problem, right? We're going to need to desolder and unmount this. Uh, and then replace it. And I will cover what we're going to replace it with as soon as we get it desoldered. Now with my address on front, uh, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? So right here, I have a very disorganized box. Five Hall Effect sensors. Right, so these are magnet-based, um, potentiometer's not the right word, but for ease of understanding and a nice analogy, they're magnetic-based potentiometers. Um, this is the potentiometer from the joystick. Uh, it functions in a similar way to a uh, game controller joystick, basically the way that these work. So they uh, put electricity through the sensor and as you adjust the potentiometer, it adjusts the resistance going through it, which the controller and the, the chips on board can use to measure and then tell the computer, the game console, whatever, what have you, uh, what direction you're facing. So in this case, it's all one axis because it's just a simple potentiometer. And then on something like the controller, it's you know two directionals up and down, left and right. And then that resistive change tells the computer that you're using what, um, what direction you're moving. The way that a Hall effect sensor works is it's uh, based on magnets. So I have in this box here, more magnets. Um, we're not gonna use all of these, but I have these magnets. And basically what happens is, is that this measures a magnetic field. And as you would move magnets across it in some direction, it measures a magnetic field, translates that into kind of the same data that a potentiometer would and then your computer game controller, or whatever you, uh, reads everything kind of the same way. So the idea here is to replace the potentiometer that is a um, not solid state device because it moves and things wear down and that leads to stick drift and game controllers. And in this case, a really loose and uh, waving data set uh, in this kind of potentiometer because they wear down, the more you use them, the more the contacts inside just kind of rub against the pads and the whole thing just, it ages, so. This has no moving parts, so it's theoretically going to last much longer. We will see how that actually works. Uh, so we're going to take this, we're going to solder it back onto the joystick with the same three wires, glue it in place, glue some magnets probably on the left side here so that when you rotate this against the stationary Hall effect sensor, it's going to look something like this, right? The magnets will move into it and away from it to adjust the, the the field. So I have been using a YouTube video from a YouTuber known as the Klaxon, or Klaxon, I don't actually know which pronunciation it is, um, that he posted uh, about a year ago, almost a year and a half, two years ago, um, that I've been using as a reference for all of this. So super thankful, very helpful. Basically gonna look to take the trapezial lettering side on the front, and we'll go left to right, yellow, brown, red. So we're going to do that, we'll get it soldered in, uh, and we'll get it tested. So I'm going to tin these legs, bend them so that they fit through the hole, and then we will solder everything together. So I open up the bottom so I can grab the three cables and I can pull them inward a little bit, uh, which is going to be useful for when we're, when we're done, but, you know, we'll... Get that in a second. So I'm going to tin the Hall effect sensor. Which so that is tinned. It's very tiny. It does not need a lot. It's not pretty, but they're bent. 
now bent. Okay, so let's pull out the helping hands again. So I'm pretty much just trying to do this by pulling these taut <laughs> and then attempting to solder them while holding them because I can't think of a better way to do this. That should be all the soldering we need. It's all soldered. I dragged some of the cables back together so that this is uh, slotted into the hole a little bit and I have it plugged into the computer right now just to look at it. It works. So I'm going to unplug it. That's all the soldering we need to do. Now it's mostly glue. While the hot glue gun heats up, um, I'm gonna glue the wires in place a little bit so that they don't accidentally short touching when we maneuver them in, but then we're going to uh, put it in place, straighten it out so it's this way, and then uh, glue it in place. Now that it's glued back together, we are going to attempt to, well, we are going to do it, but we're going to basically put this back together like so, and we need a way so that when we, we need to glue the magnets in place so that when we rotate it, it spins the magnets toward this way, that increases the z-axis that way, and then that way for the z-axis to go negative. So, copy pretty much what Klaxon does, um, though I'm using very different sized magnets, so the placement's gonna matter a little more. So if we slot this like so, Probably glue them in right. This is hard to see on camera, obviously, because I need to look at it my way. Right about there. We go for right above this injection molding mark. Okay, so it took a little while to get that oriented properly but basically the we've achieved what we wanted to do where the magnets line up with the hall effect sensor there's way more here than we need but that's okay we remove them uh so then when we would rotate this against the spring more go across it and when we'd rotate away more go away from it so and we need to calibrate this uh basically what we need to do is we plug it in to the computer uh look at that uh, that calibration monitor we had up uh, and then remove and add magnets as necessary. In this case, we're going to be removing probably about half what we have there, but that's the plan. So we have the joystick with the Hall Effect sensor and then the handle with magnets in it. You can see, if I put this together like so. If we rotate it a little bit by a little bit, then it changes, right? If we move this horizontally across it. So we basically just need to remove a bunch of magnets and calibrate this based on that. So I'm just gonna remove a bunch of these, put it back together and see what happens. All right, so I've gotten it down. So I go left, or sorry, go right. It goes all the way right, we go left, it goes all the way left. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Let's disconnect this and uh, put it all back together. Okay, so now we can put it all back together. Now that everything is uh, secured and, and all good to go. So, What's a good order to do this in? All right. Let's get joystick on. So I need to slot this little rubber hat back in. And then we need to make sure these wires don't get pinched and they don't interfere with the magnets. And We can put this one in. This one also has the hat fell out. Let's 
just like that. And then we can use this little gravity thing just to get it in there and then that. And then we just have to slot <laughs> without letting everything fall apart. Put this one back in and the hatches fill out. Cool. So let's put the rest of this back together. It's going to be our thumb grip. I'm right-handed and it's middle screw. A little palm cover goes back on the side. And then we could rehook our thumb guard thing, which is super tiny and hurts my thumb. <laughs> so let's just do this. So I don't feel like getting the mallet. Got the T2 bit again. I'm just gonna. I have a super tiny punch and a mallet that I will uh, go use to make sure that the pin is flush. But for now, it's it's in place and it's clicking. So that's good to go. Let's uh, put the bottom back together in a way that is very hard to get on camera. <laughs> Done. <laughs> I swear half of this footage was me messing around with magnets. And how do they work? Nobody knows. Okay. So that's all done. That's back together. Let's plug this in and do a final test. So we've got things in the way. So if I go left, it goes all the way left. If we go right, it goes all the way right. Everything else still works. button needs some alcohol in it otherwise uh it works it's all back together so we replaced dying potentiometer with ideally a long lasting hall effect sensor and put it all back together i hope that this was helpful because it was super helpful for me to learn uh more about these because they're coming the hall effect sensor not the hotas because they're coming uh, they're becoming really popular as replacements for controllers with drift, uh, drifting joysticks. So thank you to um, Klaxon again for his video because it was super helpful. Uh, I will link the parts that I ordered uh, in the description below. The Hall Effect sensors were ordered from eBay. Uh, so unfortunately, there's no guarantee that they'll be up forever. Um, but I bought them from eBay because they were cheaper and quicker than buying a single unit plus shipping from AliExpress. So I will list all of that in the description as well as that 3D printed bracket for the chair mount and all that other stuff in case somebody wants to copy that. Uh, but thank you again for watching. This was very exciting because I'm so happy to start playing my Space Sims again. So thank you again for watching and I will see you uh, next time.